So Liam Proud in London is joining us to talk about WeWork, the shared office provider. Now, we all thought it was going public. The private market valuation beforehand was $47 billion. Then we heard maybe it'll be 20 something, then 10. Now it seems like the company's postponing, at least for a little while, going public at all. But Liam, you've been looking at what, what's it really worth? I mean, if, if you say it's not going to grow like it's been growing and it's actually just a normal real estate company, what's it worth? Well, it's, it's very difficult to say. And as we know, valuations are more art than science. But, but I reckon you can make an argument that it actually would be worth substantially less than even the 10 billion sort of global valuation that seems to have been um, low enough for them to put the thing on hold for now. Um, so so, so that, that's a, a reflection, I think, partly of looking at you know, the, the sort of normal non-tech, non Fairy Dust competitor is a company called IWG, which runs brands like Regis and some, some others, right? Yeah, and I mean, the basic way to think about it is, look, it, the, the kind of 47 billion numbers that you see bandied around from back in um, January for WeWork, for example, and, you know, even 20 billion or 10 billion, these, these types of valuations are, you know, several, several multiples higher of revenue than you would expect for a normal right. company that was growing at a normal pace. And that's because they were premised on this idea of WeWork being a super fast paced growth company. Now, if you can't IPO and unlock all this additional right. funding that is associated with the IPO, then growth has to s slow down because that's the only way the growth was going to be funded. Now, if growth suddenly slows down, then probably you start valuing WeWork more like IWG, which, as you say, is this prudent UK-listed um, competitor. Um, slash, these guys kind of came up with the almost the original idea, which WeWork <laughs> right. are trying to copy now. It's, it's one of those. It's one of those great things where, if we were, were to stop growing and losing so much money and actually make a profit, then valuing that profit would would come come up with a much lower number than than valuing an unprofitable but fast yeah, growing company. Yeah, because it's not is not anywhere near making a profit and nor is it anywhere near making the kind of 15% um, EBITDA margin, which is just a measure, one measure of profitability, which IWG uses. I mean, I reckon even if you're really generous to them with their assumptions of what their kind of mature right. offices are making, probably about 11% margin, um, which gets you to a roughly, you know, three or four billion dollar valuation for WeWork if you use IWG's um, multiple. All right, well, let's talk a bit also about that. You, you mentioned doing an IPO to unlock funding. Now, you know, WeWork's burning billions, you know, a couple of billion dollars of cash every year. Um, it has some in the bank, but the idea of the IPO was to raise uh, several more billion. And then there's a $6 billion debt facility the company has arranged, but that's contingent on, on a successful IPO that raises at least $3 billion. So that would be, in total, $9 billion more of resources, which, if it's postponing its IPO, at least unless it tweaks those arrangements in some way, it, it won't get that money. So it, the yeah. quite question is, how long does its cash last, right? It's got about $2.5 billion of cash on hand at the moment. Um, now, that's not its, its net cap position. There's also about 1.3 billion of long-term debt on the balance sheet. But if you assume that it could use that two and a half billion, I mean, it's probably not much more than a year. They burnt cash at about 2.2 .2 billion annual rate last year. So it's, it's looking very, very tight. As you say, that all changes if they get this IPO away. Because if they can raise 3 billion, they get access to another 6 billion from JP Morgan and other banks. But that creates this really difficult chicken and egg problem for Adam Newman, who's the guy who founded this, co-founded this company and runs it. You know, he wants to keep growing. He needs the IPO to get money to keep growing. Right. Um, <laughs> but the IPO doesn't seem like it's going to happen because people aren't sure it's going to keep growing. So it's, it's, it's a horrible circularity, which he's, 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 he's unable to get past at the moment. All right, Liam, thank you very much. We'll follow that story closely, of course, and we'll have more breaking views for you tomorrow.